Good evening and welcome to Carnegie Town Hall. This meeting of the City Planning Commission will begin with a few introductory remarks. The City of Sioux Falls Planning Commission serves as an advisory board to the City Council. It is the responsibility of the Planning Commission to consider and make recommendations on land use and zoning matters. Actions taken tonight on conditional use permits are final unless appealed to the City Council in writing within five days and any actions taken tonight on initial development plans, alternative plans, or minor amendments are final. Any recommendations made on the preliminary subdivision plan request tonight will be referred to the City Council for action at the third council meeting of this month or at the first council meeting of next month if associated with a rezoning or major amendment. Any recommendations made on rezoning requests, major amendments, future land use amendments, or ordinance amendments tonight will be referred to the City Council for action at the first council meeting of next month. Council meetings are held on the first three Tuesdays at 7 p.m. here in County Town Hall and are televised. The Planning Commission will first approve the consent agenda and then the regular agenda. In order to place certain non-controversial items on the Commission's consent agenda, planning staff and the Planning Commission apply the following criteria. First, the request conforms with the Shape Sioux Falls 2040 Comprehensive Plan. Second, planning staff recommends approval of the request. Third, there are no audience members present or written comments received in opposition to the request. And fourth, the application meets all conditions and requirements of the Sioux Falls Zoning Ordinance. By approving the consent agenda, the Commission is approving the items on consent. Therefore, upon approval of the agenda, those members of the public in attendance for those items are free to leave. For the regular agenda, the following normal public hearing procedure will be followed for each item. By first requesting planning staff to present a brief report on the item. Second, the petitioner or representative will be requested to come forward and make a statement or answer questions. After the petitioner has spoken, anyone from the audience who wishes to address the agenda item shall be recognized. Then the Planning Commission will discuss the matter further and take appropriate action. We ask that anyone addressing the Planning Commission move to the podium microphone and identify themselves for the record. Please limit your comments to less than five minutes. As a courtesy to everyone here tonight, we ask that you please either turn off or silence your electronic devices. This meeting is being televised on CityLink and will be rebroadcast Saturday at 10 a.m., Friday at 7 p.m., and Wednesday at 1 a.m. Thank you for your cooperation. Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to uh, the Planning Commission meeting this evening for the City of Sioux Falls. Uh, my name is Kurt Johnson. I'm the chair of the Planning Commission. And uh, just as a reminder from uh, the video that you just saw, please silence all your cell phones. Um, they're just a big distraction if they go off in, in, in the meeting process as well as uh, there's a lot of folks out here tonight and we look forward to hearing from you on any uh, comments you wanna make uh, during the public discussion phase of our uh, agenda items tonight. I would ask you to limit your comments to five minutes if you do choose to come up and speak, as well as present new testimony, new topical matter that hasn't been uh, talked about by any of, anyone prior to you. So with that, we'll go ahead and get going here. Uh, Denise. Yes, Mr. Chair. Item one, approval of the September 6, 2017 minutes of regular meeting. Item two, September plats. Item three, 7233, 2017, rezoned from the RT1 single family residential traditional district to the RD2 townhome residential suburban district for allowed forms located at 208, 212, and 214 North Nesmith Avenue. Item 4, 7287, 2017. Rezoned from the AG Agriculture District to the RS Single Family Residential Suburban District for allowed forms located west of North Cactus Drive and south of East Imani Ridge Place. Item 5, 7434, 2017. Rezoned from the AG Agriculture and RA2 Apartment Residential Moderate Density Districts to the RA2 Apartment Residential Moderate Density and C2 Commercial Neighborhood and Streetcar Districts for allowed forms located north of East 85th Street and east of South Minnesota Avenue. 
Item 6. 7440-2017, rezoned from unzoned to the DTPUD Downtown Plan Unit Development District for allowed forms located west of South Franklin Street and between East 6th and East 8th Street. Very good. Thank you, Denise. Um, at this point, are there any members of the commission that would like to see items 1 through 6 addressed on the regular agenda? Seeing none, are there any members of the public that would like to have items one through six moved on to further discussion on the regular agenda? <coughs> Seeing none, I will look for a motion to approve the consent agenda. So motion moved. for approval. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor of the approval of the consent agenda, please signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed, same sign regular agenda, or excuse me, the consent agenda has passed. So any members of the audience that were here for items number was one through six, you're free to go at this time. Uh, and at this point, uh, I need a motion to approve the regular agenda. Motion to approve the regular agenda. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of approval of the regular agenda, please signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed, same sign. Regular agenda has been approved. Denise. Item 7, 7248 2017, conditional use permit in the BCF1 form to allow an office building without brick siding when adjacent to DD forms located at 6000 South Doral Avenue. Good evening, Diane DeCoyer with Planning and Building Services. The applicant is Paul Reynolds with RCM Construction and the owner is GPAC LLC. The location of the proposed building is at the northeast corner of East 69th Street and South Durrell Avenue, uh, and the lot is zoned as O office with a BCF1 form that requires brick siding and a pitched roof when adjacent to AD and DD forms. Uh, we've spoken, excuse me, the building is designed with wood siding, which is consistent with the adjacent buildings at CJ Calloway's. The rendering here has been submitted by the applicant. Um, we've spoken with the neighbors regarding their concerns about drainage and traffic in the area and the impact that the development would have. And they've been informed that engineering will review these items when construction documents are submitted for a building permit. You may still hear some of those concerns tonight, though. Because the application for the conditional use permit provides clarity and intent, of the Bork proposed planning staff does recommend approval. I can answer any questions you have. Commissioner, is any questions for Diane? Mr. Chair? Diane, so uh, conditional use permits can be a little tricky, but so for this one, this is for, I mean, the only thing we're considering here is whether or not wood siding is an allowed uh, uh, material to use on the outside of the building, correct? Correct. So if it had, would have the brick and stuff, it would just go get a building permit and build, right? Correct. It has a pitched roof, so that's not an issue. If on that west elevation, which is the lower left, if there was brick on that, it, you know, which is adjacent to the AD and DD forms, then, yeah, then it would not be a problem. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Dan, doesn't uh, the parking toward the front, toward the street, isn't that also part of the conditional use, or am I mistaken on that? Um, it is part of the conditional use. It is across 69th um, where those AD forms are. So that does play into it as well. Right. So it's both the parking okay. and the brick siding Correct. being changed to all wood. Right. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, commissioners? Thank you, Diane. Mm -hmm. Is the applicant here this evening? Good evening, sir. If you could state your name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Brendan Riley. Home address is 4900 South Caraway Drive. Office address is 116 West 69th Street. I am uh, managing director and general counsel at GPAC. Um, so I, as part of my duties uh, as a managing director, I handle operations and facilities. And um, so I just... Simply, I mean, I think it was stated well, I'd simply just give a little backdrop of why we're here. And it, it, it's extremely early in the process, maybe some might say premature, but um, 
We did, we were on the docket last month. We deferred, we had a neighborhood meeting at the request of the city who had well attended neighbor meeting, um, addressed or at least listened to concerns about drainage, parking and aesthetics. Um, you know, I, I know that we're here tonight simply to address the materials of the building. That was our in, intent. Um, uh, frankly, I, I maybe was caught off a little off guard that it's gotten this far, gotten this big, but um, the neighbor's concerns about drainage and parking are well heard. They're concerns of ours as well. If we build a building, we want to build it right. Um, you know as well as I, we'd have to get city approval for any drainage plan, any building plans. So really what this came down to, why we applied for the condition to use now, is to make plans for this building. We wanted to know what our cost would be, what it can look like, um, what it should look like based on if it matches our existing building. So I think everybody's aware we're on the Callaway's campus. We own what's formerly the McKinney Olson building. It's an all siding, there isn't any brick. And you know, we'd like to match the office environment that is in that campus and keep that campus feel um, in building the building. So we don't have designs. Um, I, I tried to make it clear to the neighbors that there, there are a, now two or three renderings out there of potential buildings. The first that were just black and white that I believe you saw were really just us trying to figure out what can fit on that lot um, and, and the type of building, whether it be one story or two. Even this, res I, he I hesitated to even share this because this is not our building. This, this was something that you know we put together simply to show what it, a, a building with this siding could look like. This is not our plan. This has nothing to do with it. First time I saw this was last week. Um, so I want to make it clear that we're not saying this is the plan, the elevation, the look, even a mention of pitch roof. You know, we probably would, but it's not this. Um, so really, the, the question becomes, you know, how far do we go tonight? We've heard the neighbor's concerns, understand them. We, as the building owner and a neighbor to this building, also want to have a proper drainage plan. We're, the reason we're looking at this is because how do we plan for parking, depending on the size of the building. So all those concerns are well heard. We're just weren't prepared last month. We weren't prepared at the neighbor meeting. We aren't prepared tonight to specifically address those. But we are prepared to specifically address the fact that if allowed to, we would build a nice looking building that would be similar in design and feel <coughs> to our current building. And to some extent, the CJ Calloway's building that's on our same campus. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Commissioners, any questions for the applicant? Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm sure we'll, we may have you come back up after a bit. I'll be here. <laughs> At this point, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak regarding item number seven? Good evening, sir. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Bill Taylor. I'm a lawyer. My address is 4820 East 57th Street. I represent the Doral Homeowners Group. Uh, would you put the slide up that shows the, yes. The Doral Homeowners Group is the people who live to the west and northwest of the subject property. There are a number of homes in that development that have been there in some cases as many as 20 years. Here's the issue before you tonight. First of all, I want to tell you, this isn't my first rodeo in, before the Planning Commission. I've been doing this for about 45 years, and I think my, I was trying to remember tonight how many appearances I've made. I know it's at least 100. I didn't write the conditional use permit ordinance. The city adopted the conditional use permit ordinance, and you're obligated to follow the conditional use permit ordinance in everything that you do. And the conditional use permit ordinance requires that there be an application made and there are statutory or ordinance requirements for what must be contained in the application. One of the elements that must be contained in the application is a plan that allows you as the commission 
and the citizens of the city who are entitled to come before this commission and express their concerns to know what is going to be constructed on that property and what the condition of the use of that property will be. The reason for that is, is because the ordinance requires in its statement of policy, the planning commission shall impose those conditions as are appropriate and necessary to ensure compliance with the comprehensive plan, compliance with the comprehensive plan, and protect the health, safety, and general welfare in the issuance of a conditional use permit. Now, I didn't write the ordinance. I didn't come up with the idea that if you want to have wood siding instead of brick siding, you have to apply for a conditional use permit. But I have made my career on the rule of law, and the rule of law is you have to follow that ordinance. So, with all due deference to my friend, Mr. Riley, who I've known for many years, he can come before this commission and say the only issue before us here tonight is whether we get to build with wood or whether we get to build with brick. All deference to him, that is not the issue before the commission tonight. The issue before the commission is, number one, is the application sufficient to understand what it is they propose to do on that property? And number two, does that application protect the health, if you grant the conditional use permit, does it protect the health, safety, and general welfare in the issuance of the permit? Mr. Riley said, and I wrote it down, we're extremely early in the process. He said, the rendering, the elevation, is not our building. It's not our plan. It's just a drawing that we submitted. He said, we'll build a nice looking building. But a, Saying that is not a plan. So you as a commission cannot make a cogent and reasoned decision on whether or not to grant this conditional use permit. And this is no surprise to Mr. Riley. I told him this on the phone when we talked about it earlier today. Here's what my clients want. They are very concerned about a number of issues, some of which are before the planning commission and some of which will be before the city engineers but all of which have to do with the common good in the neighborhood. I didn't mean to use that as a pun. You know, the, the company, the G in the company stands for good. My clients are interested in knowing what the drainage is going to be on the property because there is a flooding issue in the Doral Court subdivision and has been for many years. My clients are interested in knowing what the parking circumstance is going to be on the streets in the Doral community. There is a problem there now during periods of time when the uh, Callaway is, is active, overflow parking finds its way down onto the streets. The same is true with the businesses to the west that populate backwards with their parking. So. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Taylor. Um, can I assume that you're going to be speaking for a majority of the audience here? I think you're I'm speaking for all of the audience, for all of my clients. I don't think anybody else is going to speak. Okay. I'll let you continue then. Thank you. I guess to, to sum it up is we have these concerns. Mr. Riley is a good man, and he's a very capable lawyer, and he did conduct a meeting, but he could not answer the questions of the citizenry in the meetings. I think back to the high V days when we used to conduct the public meetings for the high V stores before we came to the planning commission, we always identified every question that every landowner that attended the meeting asked. And we found an answer for every question and we answered every one of those questions before we came to the commission meeting so that these issues would not be problematic. All we want is we want to know what it's going to look like. We want to know what the footprint of the building is going to be. And we want to know if it conforms to the zoning standards in what I used to call business and commercial, which is now called BCF1. They don't have those answers. Don't deny their permit, just defer it. Tell, the, tell Mr. Riley and the GPAC group 
when they have submitted elevations that comport to the language of the statute, of the ordinance, when they have a building plan that is their building and is their plan, then we'll gather up with them again, we'll work out these differences and we'll come back down here and my guess is, is that my clients will say, you know what, we don't have a problem with any of this because now we have the answers to the questions. So I'd implore you to do your statutory duty. Your statutory duty under these circumstances requires one of two things. Either you deny the permit and they have to wait six months to refile, or you defer consideration of the permit while they get their plans figured out and get their building completed. You know their contractor is Paul Reynolds. Paul and I have worked together. When he worked for the stencil company, we worked together on downtown projects for years. Paul is a very capable, competent contractor. He can prepare two sets of bids, one for a brick veneer, one for a wooden veneer, and doesn't cost him anything to do that. And then they can answer all the questions of the concerned neighbors who have lived, in some instances, lived there more than 20 years. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. And if you have any questions for any of my client group, um, we have a spokesperson who knows the neighborhood who can answer any question that I can't. Uh, just real quick before you uh, step away, uh, commissioners, are there any questions for Mr. Taylor at this point? Mr. Chair? Uh, Mr. Taylor, you uh, talk about two things. One, the application you didn't think was sufficient, and two, that um, conditions could get put on it. Do your clients have any conditions that they would like to see? Or are you recommending anything? Well, really, at this point, we can't recommend any conditions because we don't know anything about the project. If you want general conditions, yes, I can recommend general conditions. One, that they be assured that the drainage flow easterly. If you look at the city maps, it's not shown in the application, but if you look at the city maps, if you go up there by the Callaway's building, the elevation is 1513 MSL, mean sea level. And there is a there is a uh, contour line that kind of runs right around there. The elevation down on West Doral Court is 1502 MSL, 10 feet. The natural drainage is that direction. You're going to pave over a green space and you're going to put a roof down, all of which tend to divert water and it's got to go someplace. So if there is a condition, if you want to grant it, yes, there's a condition. One of the conditions has to be that the drainage has to be correct. Another condition. I think that's handled in statute, in city ordinance and state law even. But you can impose any condition that you want and you deem appropriate, whether or not it's in the ordinance. You can say, for example, that it is required that the drainage be easterly, not that there be some compromise in the city engineer's office as a condition of issuance of the permit. Second condition that you could sub is that there must be a parking management plan for the Doral Court loop and for South Augusta Avenue and for South Doral Avenue. So if the parking lot is filled up, we don't know the density of the use of the building. We don't even know how many square feet there'll be in the building. So we don't know whether there's going to be 10 people, 20 people, 500 people. I think that's also handled in the ordinance with um parking standards. There is a parking loading provision based on square footage. It says that if you construct, you know that, you construct a building of X square feet, you got to have X number of parking places. It doesn't say anything about what happens with overflow parking. So you can impose a condition on that if that is a legitimate concern that the neighbors raise. Another condition is traffic flow. So yes, you want to know what conditions to impose? I'll tell you what conditions I think you should impose. Traffic and safe passage, parking on the Doral Circle, correct and appropriate drainage. And there needs to be something discussed about the appearance of the west elevation of the building, which is not included in the plans. One of the renderings that have been shown to the residents is a blank wall building multi-story on that side, and that's what they look at when they drive in and out of their property. 
So there should be some consideration given to that also. And see, there we don't have any answers for those questions. If we had answers, we wouldn't have this problem. Anything else? Anyone else? Commissioners? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak regarding item number seven? Yes, you may come back up. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that, and and you know to continue the love fest between me and Mr. Taylor. He's an excellent lawyer. I have known him for a long time. I don't know him to be an engineer. Um, for us to be here talking about plans is premature, but to make those plans, we need to kind of have an idea of what the building will look like. So that's what we're asked for is what can we do? We had the neighborhood meeting. The neighbors agreed with us that they like the look and feel of our current building. So the siding, the windows, things like that. I'll let Mr. Taylor decide that because he also on the phone call today said there's not an issue with that. Um, but in reality, I don't think, and, and I appreciate the questions, because things like drainage, I don't think you can decide, I don't think I can decide which way my water's gonna flow. What I'm gonna rely on is our engineers and then the city engineers to approve that. Parking, we for sure are gonna have the parking requirements necessary for our building, or else the city engineer and the, and the city staff is not gonna approve our building plans. So all this stuff we know, those are good questions to have. We have the same, that's why we're here to try to plan for this. Um, but to somewhat um, maybe sarcastic, I'm not sure, but to put some conditions on us never being able to use Doral Court as a means to get in and out of our building or to park on a city street or to say today we're gonna for sure put our water drainage to the east is just, we know that's just not going to happen. So I just want to clarify those few things. Um, also, if anybody cares, GPAC stands for Growing People and Companies. Um, good's not in the name. So anyway, I'd be happy to ask these questions. We, we did have the neighborhood meeting. I thought some of these questions were addressed, but we're certainly open to whatever more questions there might be. Commissioners, any additional questions at this point for the applicant? Mr. Chair, I have a question. Um, Mr. Riley, um, you brought forth um, a statement of being premature. Um, that's been included in your comments several times. Um, and yet you're asking for something definitive from the commission, um, which challenges the issue of what is premature. And it seems that there would be alternatives that you might pursue with that in mind um, regarding the questions that still seem to exist that, that you've identified, including what's, what's the building gonna be like and, and how is it gonna fit in and, and other, other elements. Um, it just doesn't seem to jive. And I appreciate that. I, uh, maybe I should clarify. I, I think it's, it is premature because we don't have the answers to drainage and parking and I don't know that we ever are gonna need to come up with an answer on traffic flow under our court. Um, but as stated at the start, this is zoned office. We could co come tomorrow with a building plan. If it included brick somewhere on the building to the ordinance, we could start tomorrow. We wouldn't be having any of these neighborhood meetings. We would come with building plans, a drainage plan, park, just like we would submit and go. The only reason we are here and when I say it's premature to talk about drainage and parking is because we're not to that point, but we are at the point of trying to plan for what would work on that site from an aesthetics feel so we can plan. And we can put together two plans, that's correct. We could put together two drawings, but in our opinion, in our initial talks, the drawings would look drastically different. The, the size of the building, the location where it's gonna fit, where the brick would be, things like that are gonna be different if we have to add brick to it. I think it's gonna have a look of buildings across the street as opposed to a look of the buildings that are in our, on our campus, on our, on our particular spot. 
<coughs> with the building we currently have. So I don't feel it's premature to ask what the ordinance requires to do is for a conditional use permit strictly for materials used in the building. Do we have to include brick in our renderings and in our ultimate plans, or can we just use siding to match our current building? I mean, that, that's essentially what we're here to ask for. Nothing more, nothing less. We know we're going to have to submit a drainage plan. We know we're going to have to submit required parking and show required parking. We know we have to submit building plans to get approved when that time comes. So that's about the best I can answer your question. Thank you. Commissioners, any other questions at this time? Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Reynolds. I will let you do that. Please come up, Mr. Taylor. Let's not lose sight of what the concept of the ordinance is. You know, in order to get a building permit, despite what council said, you have to have a set of plans and you have to have drawings and you have to have a design and you have to go down and submit those. And when you submit them, then the building services department decides whether or not those plans as submitted comport to the zoning planning ordinance and the building codes. Got to do that. Now, the public policy of the city of Sioux Falls as embodied in the ordinance passed by the council, small government at its finest, citizen government at its finest, is that there are some circumstances when you have to ask for a conditional use permit, and this is one of them. And when you have to ask for a conditional use permit, you have to comport with the requirements of the application. One is you have to come down here and say, hey, here's what we want to do. They haven't done that. We don't know what they want to do. We don't know if it's going to be a one-story building, if it's going to be a two-story building, if it's going to be long and skinny, short and fat. We don't know any of those things. And I don't want to make them start over. There's nobody in this community more supportive of economic development than I am. If I came here and said, deny their conditional use permit for the reasons Commissioner Paulson said, and that is that your application is incomplete, then they gotta wait six months before they can reapply. I'm not asking for that. Just defer it. And when they've got it figured out what they wanna do, they can come talk to me or they can talk to our community representative, our neighborhood representative, and then we'll come back down here and we probably will have a love fest. We'll all come in hand in hand and say, yes, we got this figured out and everybody's happy. That's all we want. We don't want to make, make them wait six months. We just want answers. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Were there any other questions from Mr. Taylor? Great. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak regarding item number seven? Seeing none, I will look for commission action. Mr. Chair, can I ask staff two questions? You sure can. Thank you. Uh, Diane, so one, do you feel the applicant application is sufficient to move forward? I mean, you recommended approval, so I assume you do, but just to confirm. Again, the conditional use permit is, um, the request is to allow wood siding, that's what they're showing and to allow for parking at that corner. What they're showing us um, is exactly that. If they deviate from it, as long as they still meet their parking requirements, as long as they still bring in drainage plans and parking, um, and again, that'll be reviewed by the engineers. We had a meeting the other day with some of the neighbors and Chad Heavey, city engineer, and Heath Hoff Teaser with traffic that was part of that discussion, and they said that they would sit down and review all of these things once the construction documents were submitted. That is what they need to do, but it's premature at this time because they're just going after a conditional use permit to allow the wood siding and parking on the corner. So that's your decision there. So that was my second question. We, were not we would not be at this time approving their plan. We're approving the front yard parking, and the use of wood on the building. Correct. Okay. Thank you. 
Mr. Chair. Uh, Diane, another question for you. Uh, also, I believe on this particular uh, site, would a uh, required buffer yard also be uh, required on both, what is it, the west and the south And the south, sides? the level A buffer yard. Um, they also are required to show there is um, a sidewalk on the south side, but there is not on the west side. So they would have to have that um, included as well as the buffer yard. So that's going to help somewhat uh, mitigate the effects of this building and the appearance or those kinds of things with that neighboring uh, development. True, and design. then they do have to have um, a tree every 50 foot along the street frontage as well. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Very good. Commissioners. Mr. Chair, I'll move to approve. I'll second, second that. We have a motion to approve and a second. Any discussion? Mr. Chair, I, mean, I appreciate the neighbor's concerns and comments, but I um, think kind of Diane summarized it, that we're not approving their plan, the design, or any of those things that comes when they submit plans to the city. Um, that will take care of drainage. That will take care of parking. Those are all included in um, city ordinance. Um, and if, I mean, if you guys want to have no parking on the street right there, you should probably talk to the traffic engineers and ask for something like that. Again, I don't think anything we could do, or I don't even know how you would enforce not allowing people going to this building to park on the street. Um, so I don't see that as a condition we could put on either. Um, so I think for those reasons, I'm going to support it. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other discussion? I'm in agreement with uh, Commissioner Sertian. Uh, we're just here to, can we put wood on this building versus brick? Nothing else. Sure, there's some parking included in it. Um, knowing that uh, if they wanted to, they could probably get no parking on their streets, but that means no parking. Their friends, they can't park on the street. Anybody can park on the street. Um, so they could probably work that in if they wanted to, but that's that's something that they'd have to work out with city. So in, I'm in favor of it as uh, stated as for the siding. Thank you. Any other comments? I'm going to vote against it. Um, I don't think there is enough definition to the variety of items that are identified that. Um, would be involved in a plan related to the conditional use application. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other comments? I think there is enough information here to understand uh, the general uh, two items that are variances, or in this case, um, there's conditional uses uh, to the general use. Uh, the plan as originated uh, in the O office district and those kinds of things already conform conforms to the zoning standards as well as the comprehensive plan. It works well from a zoning standpoint. So these two little tweaks to allow parking in the front yard uh, is compliant with the rest of the development. So that seems to be consistent to me. And then uh, putting wood siding on the entire building seems consistent with the other facilities on that particular development. So both of those tweaks to what appears to be conforming, uh, in this case, are positive for that development. And then when you add buffer yards between this development and the neighboring uh, neighbors, uh, that just seems to make a lot of sense and therefore underlines kind of the value of shaped places and how a lot of these things are automatically considered as part of this. And again, to uh, reinforce uh, Commissioner Sertian's comment about the drainage, uh, drainage is well handled by uh, the city. And I know they, their uh, standards are that no more water will come off this site when it's done than it does right now and they will do an excellent job. We've done enough designs to know that they are very careful about those considerations and it should be no worse and most likely much better than it currently is. So for those reasons, I'm in support. Thank you, Commissioner. <clears throat> Any further comments? Discussion? Seeing none, just for clarity, I will call the roll. 
uh, please say your vote when I call your name. Searshin. Yes. Fegan. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Irvin. Yes. Gaspar. Yes. Lukey. Yes. Shantos. Yes. Paulson. No. Thank you. That passes what's seven to one. Seven to Next one. item. Item 8, 7432 2017, conditional use, use permit for on sale alcoholic beverage establishment within 500 feet of a sensitive land use located at 1027 South Cleveland Avenue. I'll wait a few moments as people are exiting. All right, the applicant and owner is Gary Cohn with Gary's Hilltop BP, uh, located at the northwest corner of South Cleveland Avenue and East 18th Street. The property is zoned C2 with an RE3 form. The applicant would like to convert an interior space in an existing strip mall into a casino. The conditional use permit is to allow an on-sale alcohol uh, within 500 feet of a sensitive use. There's existing residential directly um, to the west here, also across the street to the east and to the southeast of this establishment. Uh, there's also Cleveland Elementary School, which is approximately a half a mile to the east on 18th. Um, We've heard from several of the neighbors in the area that are concerned. There was also a letter that was included in your packet from a concerned neighbor um, about safety and children in the area, both having alcohol and the casino. Uh, the conditional use permit for an alcohol beverage establishment is required to provide the following, on-site parking in close proximity and facing the entrance. Um, it does appear that they have all of the parking that they need on site, but again, we'll review that at the time uh, that plans are submitted for a building permit. Lighting to provide illumination for security and safety of parking access. Soundproofing to prevent noise and vibrations from penetrating into surrounding properties and a security management plan to the police department. Because the application has provided clarity to indicate the location, nature, and extent of the work, uh, staff does recommend approval for the conditional use permit, and I can answer any questions you might have. Commissioners, any questions for Diane? Seeing none at this point, thank you. Is the applicant here this evening? Yes. Please come forward and state your name and address for the record, please, sir. I'm Gary Cohn, and I live at 1310 West 5th Avenue in Sioux Falls. Anything to add to the uh, staff's report, sir? Uh, yes. Uh, we've uh, been in business for 44 years in the Sioux Falls area. I've spent 37 years of my service at 18th and Cleveland and Hilltop. We've been in the service business forever, and we're there to service all of our customers. Our business is probably, uh, I would say, 95 98% all repeat business. We've had several people in the area, and I've got to know a lot of those folks. And I've had probably several hundreds of people since they've seen the sign, uh, what we're trying to do there. And they said, what are you doing? I said, Gary, we are trying to put in a casino in our, in our establishment. And they said, uh, we are not opposed to that whatsoever. And I, they said, it would be good we could walk from our home down there and maybe play a little, little lottery. And uh, if, if it's uh, passed, what we'd like to do, we're not going to keep it as a bar. There's uh, people that that are, are play in casinos do not drink a lot of alcohol. Most of them drink coffee and pop. And if, we, if it does pass, uh, we would certainly run at the same hours we do our, our convenience store. It's not gonna be a bar where people are gonna be hanging out and getting drunk and crazy. Uh, it's gonna be closed at 10 o'clock. We work from seven in the morning till 10 o'clock, seven days a week. And that's when the establishment will be shut down. We close our convenience store at 10 because you got all the people in the area that come from the bars and they want to come into your restroom and make a big mess and not buy anything. So consequently, it's not going to be, it's just going to be an entertainment center. 
it's not going to be a, an establishment where we're going to think we're going to have a lot of people hanging around. And I can't believe that uh, there is not a casino in the area where kids go by. There's going to be kids going by any casino there is in the area. And, and uh, our inventory of people in the hilltop area has changed drastically. So we have people, new people every week. They move in and out of that area like, I don't know. But uh, the people that we've had over there over the years, I've got to know them very, very well. And I watched them, their children grow up and it tells you how old I am. But now they have children and grandchildren. But we've been there for a long time and uh, 37 years at that location, it's my home also. And uh, I would never ever want anything to happen or have a bar where people are gonna be getting drunk and disorderly and we wouldn't want that ever to happen. But it would help our business and it would just provide another service for all the people in the area that have asked us time and time again, how come you do not have a casino in here? Well, it's never came up and we just, if we could be supported, I think it would be a great opportunity for all the people in the Hilltop area and, uh, and us also. Thank you, Mr. Cohn. Uh, right. Commissioners, Thank any you. questions? Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, Mr. Just a moment, please, sir. Sorry. Go ahead, Commissioner. I just have a quick question. Do you educate, do you have an education program for your employees to mitigate y sales to minors? Y yes, ma'am, we do okay. have. Yes. Any other questions, Commissioners? I have a question. So you're, you're still wanting to get a permit for um, on-sale alcohol. You're not just going to have a casino. That, that's correct. We're not going to, we, we have to have an on-sale alcohol permit in order to have a casino. Uh, and I, the, what I think we're going to do is going to be a wine permit, very possibly. I don't want to have to serve people beer or whatever, and they're not going to be able to drink beer in, in, the, in the convenience store. We have an off-sale beer license as we speak right now, and uh, we don't want to have people just sitting in our store drinking beer or whatever. We're not going to tolerate that. But in order for us to, to acquire a, a, literary, a lottery off a license, we have to have an on-sale beverage license. I wish it didn't, it wasn't like that, but that's just how it is, I guess. I don't make those uh, decisions. But the biggest thing is uh, providing this passes, that store is not going to be open until 2 o'clock or 1 o'clock like all other lottery places. That store will be closed right along with the, with the convenience store because we have neighborhoods there and uh, the lighting will be shut down and that, and that will be closed at the same time the store does, which is like 10 o'clock. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak regarding item number eight? Sorry, Gary. That's okay. Good evening. My name is Judy Cook. I've lived at my address right across the street from Gary's since 1979. I've seen a lot of changes in the neighborhood. There's been robberies between Gary Cones and Andy's, which is also right across the street. You're going to bring a criminal element worse than it is now into our neighborhood by allowing a casino. You'll have Drugs, I know you think I'm being exaggerating, but we see enough things going on right now on Blaine, which is right behind where Gary's is. There's going to be people that will be smoking. They'll come out of the, they can't smoke in the casino. They'll come out, they'll smoke. It's a gas station. Cigarettes, gas station. And that, there's so many kids in the neighborhood running in and out, running to Gary's, to Bob's, going across the parking lots. There, somebody's going to get hit. It's a bad corner now. There's already, at least once a week or once every two weeks, an accident on that corner. You put alcohol and cars together on that corner, there's an accident looking to happen. 
It's a bad element for kids. The kids are there, the kids are gonna see it. Their folks are gonna be in there. Their brothers, their sisters, they're gonna be hanging out there. It's, it's just a really bad situation for us. It's gonna tear down our property values. I've known Gary, well, since 1979 at least. And um, it's just, I'm sorry to have to say no to him, but this is really, really bad for our neighborhood. And that's what I have to say. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, any questions for Ms. Cook? Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak regarding item number eight? Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Katie Gelsma. I am a resident at 1000 South Blaine Avenue. I'm wearing multiple hats tonight. Uh, my father, Bob Gelsma, owns Andy's Affiliated Foods, and I'm also here as a resident. Um, a concern coming from my dad would be parking at the casino. His parking lot pretty much butts up right with Gary's. Uh, there's not a lot of parking at the gas station right now, and he is concerned about prime parking being taken from his business. Um, another concern from my parents and I is there is an open alley that comes behind Gary's and my dad's store, um, and it actually opens up right into where my garage is. So a big safety issue for me would be what is this gonna look like late at night? Um, I am an RN, I am working on my doctorate, I'm a single mom. What does that look like for me when I am on call and leaving at odd hours of the night, odd hours in the morning? Is there gonna be someone in this alley? There have been people in the alley where the police have been called before where alcohol has not even been an issue. So what does that look like now that we're inviting alcohol into this area? My neighbor is also an RN. She works very abnormal hours. What does that look like for her leaving where the garage is not connected to the house? Is that safe for her as well? There are already a lot of police in this area. As Judy touched on, this area has kind of gone downhill a little bit. This is a highly trafficked area. What does this look like again when we're bringing gambling and alcohol? Another issue is the noise level. I know Gary touched on you know, soundproofing but he also mentioned everyone in this area walks. You walk to the grocery store, you walk to the laundromat, you walk to the gas station, you pick up what you need at that time, and you walk back home. What does that look like for a noise level at 9 and 10 o'clock at night? What does that look like six months down the road if he's staying open longer hours, um, you know, until 2, until he can serve, stop serving liquor? Does that mean that we're going to have more noise complaints in that area? Um, there's just a lot of issues that have not been touched on with this proposal. Um, and safety is a big one for me and my one-year-old daughter. So that's all I have to bring forward at this time. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, any questions for Ms. Was it, was it Jelsma? Correct. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience that would like to speak regarding item number eight? Um, Mr. Cohen, looks like you did want to come up and say something else. Please come forward. As we speak today, uh, Bob also, Andy's also sells beer, all sell beer just like I do. And he sells a lot more than I possibly do. So he contributes to the area a lot stronger than I do about people being drunk or running around. And as far as the, the alleyway between the two stores, that's been like that for eternity. And as far as the noise ordinance, the noise is the same. And you're not, we're gonna not attract any more alcohol problems than there is right now in the area. And uh, for being late at night, we're gonna close at 10, and it's not gonna be open until two o'clock at night as long as I own the property. If I say it's closing at 10, that's when it closes. I do not renege on anything that I ever do. My word is God, and, I, and that's just how it is. But as far as the drunks are concerned, he sells a lot more alcohol and wine than I do. And uh, so he contributes to the problem just like everyone else. Our c contribution is a, a lot less than his. So I don't think that's a, a fair an, an analysis uh, on her thought. But she has a right to her opinion. Thank you. Very good. 
Um, <laughs> I'm sorry we can't have a debate about this. I appreciate your testimony already. I'll ask if there's anyone else that wants to speak who hasn't had a chance to speak. Can sir? I'm, I'm sorry, I don't. There's no wine sold at Andy's. They have South Dakota wine. Okay. I'm sorry. We not a not a debate function. We want to hear testimony from everyone who wants to come forward and speak, but we're not doing that back and forth in the audience, please. Oh, please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Lila Johnson, and I live right across the street from the, from the station. I've, Gary's always been a good neighbor, other than continuing to want to open a casino there. This isn't the first time that he's done that. He tried several years ago. People objected, and it was turned down. And now we're back at the same place that we were then. Now, I canvassed the neighborhood a little bit yesterday. I should have gone out sooner because nobody seemed to know about it. So him saying that all the neighbors are for it is wrong because I never, I never seen one that was for it. In fact, they were against it. Some of them weren't able to be here tonight because of um, church obligations and work issues. Um, some said they were going to call in, though, because they were pretty upset about it. They, people only... Three houses from the station said that they never ever received a letter. So they weren't really informed, but they were not. I never, there were, I never talked to one that was for it. So <coughs> it's just really not a, not a good area to have it. There's too many kids in the, in the neighborhood. Uh, one, um, the manager of a handicap group home that lives across the street from the station his comment was, you don't see him robbing ice cream stores, but they rob casinos all the time. And this is a residential neighborhood. It's not something conducive to drinking and gambling. I, I think it's not good for, the for any of the neighborhood. I just really don't want to see it happening. Great. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions for uh, Ms. Johnson? Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak, <coughs> offer new testimony regarding item number eight? <coughs> Seeing none, I will look for commission action. Mr. Chair, could I ask Diane a question, please? Diane, please come forward. Um, with regards to the request for a conditional use, it has to do with the uh, allowing non-sale alcohol within 500 feet of a sensitive use. The Correct. sensitive use is residential property. Correct. And it appears that this location is surrounded by residential property. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, well, one other question, Diane. Are there... Um, other uses, are there other locations in Sioux Falls that would be similar to this where this sort of conditional use permit has been allowed before? Um, I would assume so, but I can't answer that 100%. Okay. Maybe Jeff has a. Russell and Kiwanis, I think. Pardon me? Russell and Kiwanis, and we have one there. Yeah, I mean, we've done quite a few conditional use permits for on sale alcohol with casinos. Um, yeah, I mean, there's up and down 41st Street where we've got residential, you know, to the north of that. Um, so, yeah, it's not uncommon. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Any other discussion, commissioners? I have a motion. I'll look for commission action. Can I, can I ask a question? I'm sorry. We're he says he's going to close at 10 o'clock. If he should decide to stay open later, is there any recourse for that? I mean, is he able to just go ahead and do that, say, a month down the road or a year down the road? Will he be able to stay open till 2 o'clock with drinking and gambling across the street? From without I'm, I'm not aware of any particular conditions that may have been put on Mr. Cohn's property already. So, I, think he I mean, has much as I like Gary, it's still something that's, could potentially happen, is what I'm thinking. Yep. So it could happen. You, you, okay. Good. 
Commissioners, I look for commission action. Motion for approval. Second. Got a motion for approval and a second. Any further discussion? The, um, I'd like to think about maybe amending this to put a condition that's for this owner only. This is conditional use. So if Gary ever sells this, that the casino is only for this, can we do that? Very good. So I'd like to make motion that we amend it with that one condition that it's for this owner only. Amended for this owner only. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second for that. Any further discussion on the amendment? Mr. Chair, I think we've done that in the past. If, if you guys, staff wants to weigh in here. Uh, we've done that in the past for the old ordinance, but you would want to put a condition uh, for this applicant and owner only for an on-sale alcohol beverage establishment. The casino doesn't have anything to do with it, so. Okay. So amended. Yep. So amended. I, it appears. Very good. Uh, all those in favor of the amended amendment to the conditional use motion and second, please signify by saying yes. Yes. All opposed, same sign? No. We had a majority there, it looks like. So now we will vote on the amended conditional use permit for item number eight with the conditions with it being for this applicant and owner for the on-sale beer only. Mr. Chair? So just some comments, because I think I'm gonna support this one. Um, I don't know that anybody who, or everybody that gambles is a criminal. I mean, I think it's something adults can do. Um, so I think the characterization that there's gonna be lots of drugs and crime and stuff. I don't know that that necessarily fits. I look at the staff report and the police have looked at this, traffic have looked at this, they don't have any comments. So I take it as they're in, or they would approve this as well. So I'm gonna support it. Any other comments? Mr. Chair, uh, I also note that, uh, you know, obviously this, this group tries to balance uh, neighbor concerns with landowner rights and there are landowner right uh, issues here too to be considered, so uh, I'm personally in favor of this one as well. Thank you, Commissioner Irvin. Any further discussion? I'm gonna be um, against it for the representation of it as an example of why we require a conditional use uh, insofar as the location is surrounded by residential property which is a sensitive use. And that's what the conditional use permit is supposed to address. Correct, when we're within a range of a sensitive use, right. we do have to go through the conditional use process. So very good. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other discussion? Seeing none, I will look for the vote here. Uh, all in favor of item number eight as amended in the prior vote, please signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed, same sign. Uh, yes. Motion number eight passes. Item nine, 7433-2017, conditional use permit for an accessory dwelling unit located in the side yard located at 11 Riverview Heights. The applicant is Scott Jelmy with Jelming Construction and the owners are Walter and Martha Carlson. The property is located at 11 Riverview Heights. Um, it's on a 0.62 acre site. The applicant is requesting to construct an accessory dwelling unit on the south side of the primary residence in the side yard. Uh, the first floor will contain a garage and a dwelling unit on the second floor. The design and proposed materials of the accessory building is complementary to the primary residence. The land use transition around the site of the conditional use is compatible and should not detract from the character of the neighborhood because the application has provided clarity to indicate the location, nature, and extent of the work proposed. Staff does recommend approval for the conditional use permit. I can answer any questions you have. Commissioners, any questions for staff on this item? 
Thank you, Diane. Is the applicant here this evening? Good evening, sir. Good evening, Scott Jelming, 1413 Mustard Hill Place. Um, I'm the contractor that is coming before you to get this conditional use permit for my clients, Walter. And um, basically, you know, he's got a two stall garage and now he's got room to put a, another two stalls on, which he didn't really want. And it lends itself really nicely to put in this, uh, a guest suite, let's say, up on top of the garage. It'll tie in really nicely with design wise of the existing house. We're using all the same materials. Um, and everything like that. So we're basically using the same driveway um, that's there. Um, the height, you know, the height of the accessory building we're going to put up is less than the existing home is now. By probably, I'm going to say six, seven feet. Um, sits down a lot lower. And you can see in the south elevation, the left hand side, that the hill goes drastically up towards the west. So. There's not a lot of the back of the dwelling showing. Appears that your, uh, the accessory building here and layout on the lot is going to be about midway through the house itself, not counting the garage. It's not going to extend any right, far correct. The existing structure. And Basically, yeah. And that the screen porch is, is right now is an outdoor patio barbecue area that they have now. So we're just accepting that into that area. Very good, thank you. Uh, commissioners, any other questions for Mr. Delming? Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak regarding item number nine? Mr. Chairman, commissioners, good evening. My name is John Taylor. I'm Bill's son. A uh, couple of different points of clarity here in terms of the conditional use permit application. Uh, the definition of side yard and rear yard within the zoning ordinances are a little clunky. Um, for this particular lot, uh, Walter and Martha Carlson bought the house next door um, immediately to the south, which was in a poor state of repair uh, that happened last year. Uh, and the building was torn down and uh, some old trees were removed. Some old volunteer trees were taken out. Um, the original lot line for lot uh, 14, where the red circle's drawn on the screen, um, if you go north a little bit where dog legs right there, that's where the original lot line was. That lot 14 has since been sold uh, to Mrs. Karen Lund, and she's uh, in the process of designing and uh, planning a home to be built on that lot there, which will also be commensurate with the neighborhood. But back to the, uh, the zoning ordinance, the if you do the math on the site plan versus the uh, front yard and the backyard and the definition of a rear yard, uh, it falls in the back half of the lot um, from a design perspective and from a site use perspective, it makes the most sense to put it here because of the uh, existing driveway and the amount of excavation uh, that would have to be done for the foundation of this site uh, is considerably lower than putting it uh, all the way in the back corner where uh, where a conditional use permit wouldn't be required in this case. So, um, in terms of the, uh, Mr. Jelming talked about the elevations, uh, the main house roof elevation uh, is approximately uh, 1,523 feet, 1,523 MSL. The roof line of the uh, accessory dwelling is gonna be at uh, 15, 14. It's about nine or ten feet lower than the main house. Can I answer any questions? Commissioners? Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak regarding item number nine? Good evening. Hi, good evening. Uh, I'm Dan Donahue. I live at 13 Riverview Heights. Uh, and uh, um, my wife and I have lived there for 40 years. Um, 
First of all, uh, uh, although uh, some might feel I would be, be here at, at, on, on, for another purpose or other reason, uh, we think Walt and Martha have done a wonderful job uh, in the neighborhood, uh, in particular if you look at the uh, overhead. Uh, uh, we uh, we had to live directly behind the house that Walt and Martha uh, took down last year. Um, it's uh, rather hard to describe, you know, what it uh, what it looked like and how it looked uh, from our side of the fence. Uh, so, uh, in looking at the plans that uh, Walt and Martha and Mr. Jel uh, Jelming have submitted, uh, it looks like there's going to be a very very nice uh, garage, <coughs> pardon me, garage structure is gonna be built uh, uh, over on uh, Walt's side of the fence. Uh, and we're very pleased with, uh, with uh, you know, the way that it, it generally looks. Now there's, there's uh, certainly some features on the south side, on the east side, and on the north side, as you can see from those elevations that you uh, probably have in front of you. Um, we're directly west, um, and, and uh, we think it'll be a very, very nice uh, facility. Uh, I t did talk to Walt on Saturday uh, about uh, about this, and I just inquired as to whether there was a landscape uh, plan at all, and it's not required with regard to the application. Uh, and Walt mentioned there that there, they don't have one set up yet. Uh, I was just hoping that uh, Walt and Martha could plant a couple uh, trees in the area, kind of between their home and our home. Uh, we would not then uh, see the rear part of the garage with uh, a little bit of a buffer there. Um, Walt, uh, Walt mentioned that might be possible. Uh, I'd certainly be willing to pay for a couple trees if Walt and Martha wanted to put a couple in over there. So um, that's all I have to say. We're in full support of the, of the, uh, of the project and uh, we think it'll look real nice and uh, uh, we'll uh, be watching it as it goes up. Hopefully they can get started this fall. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, commissioners, just real quick, any questions for Mr. Donahue? Nope, okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak regarding item number nine? Seeing none, then I will look for commission action. Move for approval. Second. Got a motion for approval and a second. Any discussion? Mr. Chair, it's always nice. We rarely get to see neighbors support on right. these sorts of projects, <laughs> so it's nice when that happens and it's nice that I think they could come to an agreement that um, trees going up would be a good thing. So I applaud both of you. Yep. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other discussion? I wish it hap happened more often. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, you can step up here to the podium to speak. Um, you know, we haven't agreed to put up any trees, uh, but if you look at the landscaping of our home, it's well done. But I haven't Just, made, you need to come up to the podium right. to speak. I haven't agreed to do any trees. Mr. Donahue who also offered to pay $25,000 for when I bought the lot, but I ended up paying for it myself, which is fine. So I don't want him to pay for any trees. We'll most likely put up some trees, but we have no idea when we'll put up the trees, Correct. if we'll put up any trees. So I don't want that to be any kind of contingency. No, oh, there's no motion related to that involved with this uh, vote you. at this time. Very good then. Um, hey, so I thought it was nice that they could come no. to an agreement. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> Sorry, we're, we're, we're closed for uh, further comment. We're ready for the vote. Uh, commissioners, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of item number nine, please signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed, same sign. Item number nine is approved. Move to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn a second. All in favor, signify by saying yes. 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 Okay. Adjourned. Have a great night, Sioux Falls.